So for those of you who haven't heard, I am at uh, GDC, the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco. And yeah, if you could actually read any of these signs behind me, you would see that all the big name players are in fact in town. We have PlayStation, Oculus, Microsoft, Unreal, uh, Unity, I don't think that's Unity right behind me there, CryEngine. Yeah, everyone is basically here showing off all their stuff. Valve has a whole section set aside to show off their VR, and unfortunately it's not particularly well lit, so I couldn't show you that. But, yeah, I'm going to tell you what happened during my week at the Game Developers Conference 2016. So yeah, GDC has been happening for 30 years. Uh, it's in San Francisco every year, and uh, unlike, say, uh, E3, which is focused on launching the new games, or say TwitchCon, which is about bringing players together, this is about bringing the developers together to uh, share the new technology, find out about the new tools, and more importantly, just meet each other. Instead, some of them were unlucky enough to meet me, such as this guy called Dan, who does all the animation for Kerbals, or this guy called Dan, who creates Universe Sandbox. There was Lucas Pope, the creator of Papers, Please. And I spent a good amount of time talking to Josh Parnell, who assures me that he is still working on Limit Theory. But surely the highlight of the week was when I got to hang out with Danny Baranowski and Gypsel at the same time. Now I will point out that there was quite a bit of partying going on at this particular event, in part because Danny Baranowski had been recognized earlier in the week for his work on uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer. He took home the Game Developer's Choice Award for Best Audio, but it was more because just everyone around that table was awesome and great to talk to. But equally, I had a chance to get hands-on with some of the new titles, and so that's what I'm actually going to show you now. And the thing I was most eager to try was Kerbal Space Program on the games consoles. So very early on in the week, I visited the Kerbal uh, installation, uh, let's say, at the Razer party. And uh, they were showing off running on an Xbox One. And, you know, it actually works pretty well. During the week, I played Kerbal Space Program both on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. And they are the full versions of the game. The main difference with the console versions is that they are, of course, required to be controllable through a gamepad, which makes many, many things harder for someone like me that doesn't really use gamepads. But in my multiple visits to the Unity booth, uh, I saw the same guy turning up again and again, and he managed to get to Minmus, to the Moon, to Duna, so clearly, with a bit of practice, that's not a barrier. But the other big question is about the performance of the physics engine, and I will say that if you build a very large spacecraft, you will uh, run up against physics limits. However, I will also say that I have played and enjoyed Kerbal Space Program on PCs that are clearly slower and less performant than the console version. So I think that it is a perfectly adequate version for anybody that has a games console and not a PC. While no official final release date has been set, we can expect the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 versions of Kerbal Space Program to drop later this year. <laughs> there we go, the Tower of Reaction Wheels. Congratulations, sir. Yay! Anyway, speaking of video games and rockets, one of the more interesting vendors at the show was SpaceX. They actually gave a presentation where they explained why video games development is actually perfect training for designing software to work on real rockets. Anyway, back to the games, we have Starpoint Gemini Warlords, the sequel to Starpoint Gemini 2. It basically takes the same game mechanics and engine and now adds a universe-wide conquest mechanic. So you can assemble your fleets and take control of large fleets, or if you want, you can still continue to be a lone player raiding the territory of your enemies. The publisher was kind enough to let me sit down with a couple of the developers for about half an hour. We talked about all aspects of the game and how it's changed and improved from Starpoint Gemini 2. It's not the greatest footage by any means, but if you were a fan of the Starpoint Gemini games, it's definitely worth checking out as the developers reveal their plans for this newest version of the game. I feel I should also mention that the publisher was very keen to show me Oriental Empires, which is a, a, you know, an ancient 4x strategy game based in China. 
Not the kind of thing that I generally play on my channel, but you know, if you're a Civilization fan, this could absolutely be your thing. I do like the fact that the game includes era-appropriate gunpowder rockets and traction trebuchets. While the Western trebuchets would use rocks or lead as a counterweight, uh, the Chinese armies, they just used a whole bunch of people pulling on ropes to lob rocks across the battlefield. Anyway, moving swiftly on. After a bit of last minute Twitter pleading, I got to meet this guy called Henrik. Henrik is from Sweden and he's best known as being the director behind Crusader Kings 2, but right now his goal is to make space great again. He has been developing Stellaris. Now, Paradox are known for their grand strategy games. Crusader Kings, Europa Universalis, Victoria, Hearts of Iron, so stepping into the future and creating a grand strategy 4X game has definitely got space fans uh, to sit up and take note. The game will be released on May 9th and judging by the mechanics that was demonstrated even in the short time that I had, the game will provide a great deal of inspirational uh, after-action reports of tales of empires rising and falling within the galaxy. A big part of GDC is the expo, and there you will find booths from various people trying to sell you things, such as game engines or tools to make assets for game engines, hardware, software for players, lots and lots of game demos, security tools for protecting your games, tools for creating procedural weather systems, and occasionally the odd multi-million dollar monster booth. So what are you saying, this is Clash of Kings, like very impressive set here. Yeah, so apparently this cost three and a half million dollars and it's been mostly empty for the whole show. It does look pretty empty to me. Yes. I think someone in armor came over and said that we should stand on the stage and shout things and that was their kind of trying oh. to get developers involved. But the biggest thing at GDC this year was VR. VR was everywhere. There were tons and tons of demos everywhere. Headsets were appearing from multiple manufacturers. Valve had taken over a whole ballroom to show off many of the games on the HTC Vive. And I had a couple that I tried. I uh, tried Modbox from Alien Trap. And it's basically a fun little geometry and physics sandbox. It works pretty well on the Vive, because uh, the Vive actually is designed to be played like in a room with the sensors. You can actually step around the room or you can teleport if necessary. But more interesting perhaps for my average viewer is Universe Sandbox. Now when you first think about it, it may not be the type of title that springs to mind uh, for VR. But there is something really fantastic about standing like a god over the planet Earth and then shooting moons at it like you've got a pair of six shooters that are loaded with the moon. But for those that find VR to be far too mainstream, there's Alt Control GDC, the alternative controller exhibit, which, uh, well, invites people to come in and demonstrate really interesting and innovative ways to control games. The games don't always mesh so well with the controls, but that is just something you have to deal with in game design in general. Regardless, it's actually one of the funnest places to visit where you can completely forget the skills you have learned with that Xbox controller and instead try to control a game through something ill-designed for the task. So that was what I've been doing pretty much the last week and why there's been hardly any videos, but you know what? It has been worth it. I've made a great many connections. I will be hopefully able to cover some of these games in full when they are released and uh, hopefully some of these talented people will finish up their games and I'll get to play them. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.